Hello everyone, welcome to Laser Access first webinar. My name is Catherine and I'm the Application Lab Supervisor and your speaker for today. For those of you who are not familiar with the company LaserX, we are an inline laser solution manufacturer specializing in surface preparations such as laser marking, cleaning, texturing and welding. Um, today we're going to talk to you more specifically about laser texturing. Uh, actually, I've been doing a master's study with LaserX for the past two years, and the subject was the development of industrial solution for laser texturing of aluminum surfaces prior to adhesive bonding. So this webinar will present the results of that master's study, and we are very excited to share with you the results that we gathered. So without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so as it was already mentioned, this project was part of a master's uh, degree. Um, basically, the emergence uh, of this project was from the fact that LaserX uh, saw interest from their customers to develop industrial solutions for laser texturing, um, but they wanted to really understand how the laser texturing process works and how it could be applied using LaserX's current technology. Um, so that's the context of the project. Now let's get right into it with the main objectives. So the first one, of course, understand the theoretical principles behind the laser texturing process, then develop and optimize the application of laser texturing using LaserX's current technology, and finally apply laser texturing on aluminum surfaces prior to adhesive bonding. For those of you who are not familiar with the laser ablation principle, I'm gonna do a quick recap for you. So laser ablation is the phenomenon in which we describe the interaction between laser and matter. And that can be characterized using a parameter called laser fluence, which is the energy per centimeter square of the laser beam. If the fluence of your laser is higher than what we call the material ablation threshold, you will have an instant vaporization of the metal. If your fluence is slightly lower than the threshold, you will have a melting and resolidification of the metal. And if it's way lower, of course, there's gonna be no effect. So this particular phenomenon causes a change in the roughness and the pattern on the surface. Additionally to that, you have a plasma plume that is generated at the interface of the laser and the material. And that plasma plume creates an environment in which chemical reactions with ambient air are favorable. And that causes a layer of surface oxides on the surface uh, that are not to be confused with typical oxides that we don't want um, on our surface. And the addition of that treatment, that change in roughness, and these surface oxides increase the overall surface area to bond as well as the chemical bonds on the surface which uh, in theory increases adhesion. And that's what we wanted to demonstrate with this project. So the laser that we use, was used for this project is the LXU HP500 laser from LaserX, which is a nitrobium dub fi dope fiber laser um, with an average power of 500 watt, of course. Um, you can see that the pulse uh, parameters are interchangeable for the uh, for this particular product, but we used the basically the nominal operation of the lasers, so what is in parentheses. I won't go into details on the exact parameters, but um, basically the combination of this laser and the optical elements that were used in the laser head um, generate an overall laser fluence at focus of 24.6 joules per centimeter square, which is more than enough to ablate metal. As a reference, the threshold of ablation for aluminum is around three joules per centimeter square. So let's get right into it. We decided to divide this project into multiple phases. The first one being a strength study in which we just wanted to see if by doing laser texturing on a surface, we could increase the overall strength of the bond. Uh, so the substrate that we use for the entirety of the project was polished aluminum 6061 um, in order to have basically a negligible roughness as a reference. We used various parameters for the study and uh, we decided to change them individually to understand the effect of each one. And each time we were selecting the prime parameters uh, to then have as a result, uh, let's say, optimal uh, or prime recipes. Um, 
we perform in this particular phase uh, pull tests and lab share tests. So not only did we want to quantify the strength of the joint, we also wanted to characterize the rupture type. So there is three possible outcome in a joint rupture. You can have an adhesive rupture, which is between the adhesive and the surface. You can have a cohesive rupture, which is within the epoxy itself, or you can have a substrate rupture, which is not applicable in our case because we have a metallic substrate. Um, but basically the goal is to achieve a cohesive uh, rupture because that means that your surface preparation is not the limitation of your joint strength. And you can see here uh, a couple of examples of um, adhesive and cohesive ruptures. So these are the parameters that we decided to test uh, for this project. The first one being the pattern. So as you may know, uh, the particularity of laser is that the pattern can be interchangeable. We uh, modified with parallel lines, grid pattern or dots matrix. And we concluded that the best one was parallel lines. Best one for us uh, meant very good strength, cohesive rupture of the joint, and also the fastest process possible because we are looking at industrial solutions. Um, so then we went into the scan speed as well. Um, we did four different values and 35 meter per second was the fastest speed that we could achieve using the optical configuration that we had. And we realized that the max speed was providing very good um, surface strength, uh, joint strength and surface properties. So we decided to keep that one. And finally, we changed the line spacing, um, ranging between 10 and 120 microns. And we basically realized that the best uh, line spacing depends on the adhesive that you use. And we tested that over three different adhesives. Then with that knowledge, we were able to go into the second phase of our study, which was an aging uh, study. The actual aging test that we wanted to perform had a limited amount of samples that could be put through. So we decided to do a preliminary, preliminary test, which is the cataplasm test, um, which the company Jaguar is using to characterize their abundant joint. The aging test goes as follows. Abundant joints are put in cotton soaked in nanopure water with a weight ratio of one to 10. Um, the joints are then put into a heat chamber at 70 degrees C for seven days. On the seventh day, they are put into a cold chamber at minus 20 C for 16 hours. They are then leave at room temp to thaw. And then the strength of the joints are characterized before and after aging. So for this particular test, we decided to do two scan speed, the maximum one and 25% of that value. And we also changed the line spacing. We used two epoxies, Loctite EA9460 and Betamate 4601. Uh, the reason is that these two adhesives are very common in the automotive industry, which is the main market for laser access technology. And they are also two very different types of epoxy. One is a two compound and one is a one compound. Um, we decided to compare the laser textured samples and we really wanted to see the effect of the layer of oxide that we uh, described in the theory uh, to see if it, it is really beneficial to the bonding uh, of the joint. So for half of the samples that we put through uh, the aging test, we removed the oxide by doing a laser cleaning pass um, right after texturing. Uh, and we also decided to compare the textured samples with traditional methods of uh, surface preparation, uh, one being uh, a 220 grid blast and the second one being a 220 grid blast combined with a uh, three GPS siling chemical uh, coating. So the results that uh, we achieved are as follows. Basically all treatments that we perform cape kept a strength ratio of over 80% after aging, which is really good news. However, unfortunately, we weren't able to see any correlation between the change of scan speed or line spacing within the laser texturing recipes that we perform. And uh, we saw no visible advantages of removing the oxide layer. Nonetheless, uh, this, pro this particular phase was able to uh, reassure us into sending uh, some of the laser treated samples through the second aging test that we perform, which is the Ford test, uh, BV101.07, which is a much more intense aging test. 
so the test goes as follows. The joints are bonded together and then put through uh, an assembly that puts them basically under stress at 2,500 Newton continuously. Then all the joints are put into a one-day aging cycle. Uh, first, a salt bath at 5% for 15 minutes, drying for 105 minutes, and then an environmental chamber at 50C and 90% 90 90 humidity for 22 hours. After each day, the joints are inspected and the ones that are ruptured are remo removed uh, from the study in itself. The goal for us was that all samples from the same treatment, which were five per treatment, uh, was able to sustain 45 days of aging without any sample rupturing. Uh, we decided this time to compare the laser-treated samples with elodyne, uh, which is a very typical chemical surface treatment prior to uh, adhesive bonding of aluminum. And uh, one of the first observations that we noticed is that all the Loctite uh, EA9460 samples ruptured after approximately five days of aging. Um, the reason for that is simply that the aging test is meant for epoxies that are more in the bitumate family. Uh, so unfortunately, the loctite was just um, not strong enough to sustain uh, the stress that, was put, that the joints were put under. Nonetheless, we were able to have very interesting results with the bitumate uh, samples. So these are all the treatments that we put through the test. Um, the label basically describes the recipe. So the first number is the scan speed, and the second number is the line spacing. So 60, 90, 120 microns in that case. And the two last recipes with the C were ones that the oxide layer was removed after texturing. So what we can observe is that three laser textured recipes were able to sustain the aging cycles. Um, and that all the other ones add at least one or two uh, ruptures uh, during the 45 days, uh, which is really good news and very encouraging for us. And if we were to select the best one out of the three, we would take the green one um, just because it's the fastest one at 21.3 centimeters square per second. So basically we were able to demonstrate that laser texturing is a very reliable and good approach for adhesive bonding in uh, automotive industry applications. Now that we had that information, we wanted to understand why those, texture, those textures were better than the other ones. So we went into the, the third phase of the study, which was a physical chemical property studies um, to understand uh, basically the properties of each surface. The first thing that we did is a wettability test uh, using the tree droplet method. So basically you are put in droplets of three different liquids on the surface, water, diiodomethane, and formalide. Uh, you then measure the contact angle of each droplet on the surface. And then by doing uh, mathematical calculations, you can determine what is the surface-free energy on your surface. And the more surface-free energy you have, the better adhesion you're gonna have. So these are the results that we observed. As you can see, um, the three different colors uh, basically mean three different calculation methods. But what we can see is that clearly the good uh, performing recipes were able to have a much higher surface free energy. And we can actually see by that by removing the oxide uh, on the surface, we are reducing uh, that free energy. Then we went into spectroscopy analysis. We did FTIR and XPS. FTIR is an infrared spectroscopy where uh, infrared beams are uh, shoot out on the surface and the absorbance basically of those uh, wavelengths are detected. Each molecule has its own uh, absorbance spectrum so you can then determine what it, are the molecules that are present on your surface. XPS works very much in the same way except that x-rays are sent on the surface and photoelectrons are detected. Uh, each element has its own photoelectron emission, uh, so that's how you can characterize uh, the chemicals over on your surface. So these are the results that we obtained. Um, the, there are three things that we can gather from that analysis. The first one being that there is an increase in oxide on the surface uh, for the good performing recipes. Um, for these ones as well, you have a lower amount of carbon on your surface. Carbon can uh, characterize organic contaminants on your surface. 
And finally, if we correlate uh, the oxygen level with the absorbance spectrum between 3 and 3.75 microns, we see that the good performing recipes add a better absorbance. Uh, this uh, absorbance spectrum corresponds to hydroxide molecules, um, which tells us um, without a doubt that there is either presence of ALOH3 and or ALOOH on the surface, which are aluminum oxides that are beneficial to the bonding of the joints. We also perform high resolution optical imaging and roughness measurements. Uh, we can see that for the three good performing recipes, we had a roughness measurement um, of approximately 1.5 to 6 microns. Um, so this was the conclusion of our project. Of course, this was very interesting knowledge, but now we needed to apply that to actual uh, industrial uh, applications. So um, additionally to adhesive bonding of aluminum joints, uh, this study was able to make us understand a little bit more how laser texturing works and how we can apply that to multiple different applications. Uh, I'm going to show you a couple of examples uh, of these applications that we've been working on. The first one being uh, some applications in the EV industry which is very relevant these days. So the first one would be the laser texturing of battery housing prior to bonding. There is also the laser texturing um, prior to structural adhesive bonding, which is a practice more and more common for um, car manufacturers. And finally, uh, laser texturing of nickel plated steel uh, on batteries for better thermal management. Uh, these are actually projects that are ongoing currently at LeisureX, so we hope to understand a little bit more these specific applications and have very good results. Other type of applications that we can, but that we typically see uh, that can benefit from laser texturing, laser texturing of bipolar fuel cells, laser texturing prior to thermal spray coating, which has a lot of similarities to adhesive bonding, of course, and finally, laser texturing for friction management. Um, so there is really a wide range of applications where a laser texturing is a very uh, good approach. Here are two examples of laser texturing uh, that we perform at LaserAx. Uh, these vi videos are available on our uh, YouTube page. But to the left, you can see a texturing of an aluminum turbo housing, generating basically a roughness of 8 microns. This is prior to thermal spray coating. And to the right, you can see a texturing of a battery housing um, with an array of about 3 microns, and this was for uh, adhesive bonding. So two very good applications that uh, we are excited to share with our customers. So this concludes uh, this webinar. Thank you everyone for participating and uh, coming to see the results that we wanted to share. Uh, if you have any questions about what was presented in the presentation, feel free to write them down below. Uh, otherwise, if you have any interesting applications that you want to discuss about, feel free to reach out to us at LaserX and we'll be happy to help you.